Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome, and uh, this time I'll call our call meeting to order, and I'll turn the floor over to you, Dr. Gladney. Thank you, Mr. Galloway. I'd like to say good afternoon, board, and good afternoon to everybody who's here with us in the Fannin County Performing Arts Center this afternoon, as well as those folks who are watching us online on Rebel TV. I wish you welcome as well. And uh, board, we have one item on the agenda for today's call meeting, and that is to approve a GMP for our CM at risk. And so to accomplish this, I'm going to turn the floor over to our assistant superintendent, Darren Danner, who's going to present some information related to this agenda item. Good afternoon, Mr. Danner. Good afternoon, Dr. Guatney. Good afternoon, board. Um, very exciting day. And, uh, you know, this has been a long time coming. Uh, I've been speaking with uh, uh, Henry Panetta and Drew Watson several times today, and Henry reminded me that today, one year ago today was the first time we met with Bro and Associates to start discussing plans. So, um, and I told Henry, I said, "Well, I'm so glad you told me that because uh, I know how the you know we all like history, but again, that that's just uh, um, hopefully that's the way everything's going to go from this point forward." And um, um, you know, I'm just going to jump right into it. I mean, I really do. Um, you know, we we've been talking again for you know five or six months. Uh, about plans, about uh, different types of things we want to, to add, starting with the transportation facility. Uh, we was uh, very fortunate to get the property at the Tacoa property. Had all this property, you know, we had some excess land, what we're we gonna do with. And then uh, that's when we were doing all of our training, so we started looking at a staff development center. And um, so again, you know, without further ado, uh, just wanna show you some things there that we're gonna present to you. Uh, this is one of our civil engineer drawings uh, from Brown Associates. Uh, uh, what, what, um, you know, what type of in, in, in type of constructions that could possibly be happening very soon. And um, uh, this location up here is the staff development center. This is the transportation facility. Uh, this is the bus training area. This is the uh, fueling station. So, um, you know, everything we've asked for uh, not only from the architect but also the CM uh, they have produced for us so again that's that's one rendering I want to show to you uh, to get make it more realistic uh, you know you've seen some of these drawings before uh, but we do have some additions uh, this is a view like if you was at McKinney Road looking back towards the dam towards the lake area sort of one perspective of it this is the transportation facility here at the bottom and the staff development center off uh, back behind it over there. Um, so again, I'll just scroll down the, the next slide. Um, again, this is pretty much the same thing I just showed you on the left-hand side. Uh, this is a close-up view uh, for the staff development center and then a close-up view for the transportation facility. What is not shown here, uh, of course, the fueling station and the uh, training facility is just to about where that those wordings are there but again that's the close-up view on it and um, uh, next slide again where this is the transportation facility uh, alone uh, here's the floor plan uh, that has been worked on uh, multiple hours uh, multiple meetings not only with our own staff uh, but with Denver and his staff uh, many 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 tweaks have been done to this but um, uh, it does have three drive-through bays, which means we can actually put six buses in this at one time. Um, currently, in our current facility, um, I know it's built for three, uh, but we could probably get two in there, but we couldn't close the doors. So, uh, you know, with our new buses, the way, you know, the, the lengths of them now, and uh, just show you the perspective of the transportation facility. Uh, here is a couple views inside of the actual um, the garage itself, the facility. Um, notice that there is a, a walkway here that is not uh, um, uh, that the buses again can get fully in uh, with the front open and the back closed or open as well. Uh, can be put up on the left. Uh, here's a you know picture there. So again, notice this is on one side. This is the other. Then you have this walkway in between. Uh, you know, we, we we took that from one of the places that we visited, and um, uh, just very spacious, and uh, you know everything is enclosed. So that's one 
perspective of the transportation facility. Mr. Danner? Yes, sir. Can you give us an idea of the outside the dimensions? It, this is deceptive. Yes, in sir. You uh, can't the size of it. I think that is on here on the floor plans itself. Okay, well, maybe it's not. All right, so help me out. Uh, all right, I'm, I'm going to stop at this point. Uh, yeah. so I, I'm sorry, yep, it is there, but yeah. I'm, I'm still going to stop here in just a moment. And we've also got our architect uh, that's yes, here with us that can speak to this as well. Yes, sir. Uh, notice this way here, Mr. DeWeese, from, from top to bottom, it's 112 feet 8 inches. Yes, I see it now. Okay, yep, and then, um, yeah, I can't get it up there, my mouse ain't working, 135 8 155 8. 155.8. 8. Yeah, I can't see that as well. 17,500 square feet. Square feet. And That's then the since. Size of this room, sort of, isn't it? Uh, Approximately. Anyway, it's much larger size than you, of this room. you can try it's, uh, Mr. Moat, I bet Mr. Moat can tell us the size of this room. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe Mr. Moats can't tell us that. And, uh, <laughs> uh, hey, but thank you, first Mr. DeWeese, for those questions. And then that reminds me as well. Uh, uh, I want to do some special thanks before we go any further. Um, special thanks to Mike Sperlin. He's been on this from day one. And he has taught me so much over this process, over this last year. Uh, Denver Foster, of course. Dr. Guatney, Robert Ainsley, Sarah Rigdon. Chad Galloway was in on, on the initial, you know, some of these things on here. Uh, uh, all the directors got input, not only on, even on the, the transportation facility, but the other facility that we'll discuss here in just a moment, all of our directors, our central office staff. Scott Mathis, Heather Finley's helped out with technology uh, in both facilities. Uh, Candy Sisson, um, Doug Fields. Doug Fields is our consultant from Pioneer Reason. Uh, he has helped out tremendously on this. Uh, here with us today is Doug Bro with Bro and Associates. Y'all have met him before. And also Henry Pineda. Uh, is that right, Henry? Henry Pineda. Henry's become our, our personal architect. And uh, so, again, I'm, uh, Henry's always, Henry's never answered every time I've called. Uh, also is our, our CM at risk, uh, Drew Watson with, uh, with Bowen and Watson. And uh, Drew's got a special guest with him. His dad, Keith, is here. So uh, this is Keith Watson. And... Uh, uh, Neil Williams, also with Bowen and Watson, has helped out tremendously, and um, and whoever else I'm I'm leaving out, it's not intentional. And, uh, but again, I appreciate all that. And uh, uh, Mr. Dwayne, thank you so much because I forgot to do that before we got started. And uh, uh, so, uh, any other questions on the floor plans before we before we go? Let me floor? ask one or two. Yes, sir. Up there where it says electrical, and then you got those four things. So that's the best lift. Is that right? This right here, Mr. Yeah, the lift, not the words, right yeah. there. Those lifts are, are, is that the in-ground lift, no. Henry? Or is that? Henry, Henry, come on up here. Henry, come on up here. Them are above ground. Them are lifts. It'll hook on each wheel. Yeah. So he's talking about up at that right. That right. is a piece of equipment which is a four column mobile lift 14,000 pounds of capacity is what has been specified uh, and maybe you can get a good look in with another of uh, the perspectives you might have a look at what the piece of equipment looks like okay on the bottom down there the two it's just a lock at the above ground is that the right? bottom two bays show the in-ground lifts and to your left would be a two post lift which is an existing piece of equipment in the uh, facility right now, which is going to be moved to the new facility. Okay, that'd be like for light cars and trucks. That and is stuff a twelve thousand like pound capacity yeah. lift. That'd be for light vehicles. Yeah. What is the ceiling height? The white fleet. Excuse me. The ceiling height. Sorry. How ceiling high is it inside? Ceiling height. ceiling height. We have a height of eighteen foot uh, clear. Um, so where the slope starts. So there is plenty of space to have the bus lifted above ground 
and yet have all the ductwork and the pipes uh, that serve the reels um, and with all the overhead clearance. Okay. Now that the top it. Yeah. That's two thirds of a football field, is it not? Yeah. Or very close to it? Very close to it. Very close. Okay. I'll, I'll keep going there. Y'all stay close by. Right. <laughs> um, let's go back to the. Uh, well, I'll pull that back up in a second. Uh, back to the renderings, uh, that one lift you're talking about, uh, Mr. Bearden, I'm not sure which one that, this is that moat, the, uh, the one that is coming with us that we currently have, Right. this lift. Yeah. And then the in-ground, um, you know, that, that's showing an in-ground lift there. And... Uh, Yes, it's them. that. Yeah, that That's one. That's them over there to the left. Yeah, those, those two right there. Correct. Correct. Do those lift the wheels? They lift the wheel, and then there's a jack you use once you get it in there. Okay. Okay. Also in the transportation facility, uh, Denver has requested a an area to you know have uh, trainings, have meetings, have whatever. So. Uh, this is the training area, so if you're standing in the center of the room, and I'll go back to the other plan, uh, that's looking towards the kitchenette area here. There's a retractable wall, so just to make that space even that much larger. Uh, of course, this is a close-up in the kitchenette. This is, again, standing in this room and looking in the opposite direction. So there's some workstations there. They can watch, uh, you know, the, the, the drivers can come in. They can do their um, uh, compliance directors. They can have comp uh, computer access, uh, that sort of thing. And to put that in perspective, again, let's go back up to the floor plan. Uh, that is that area here in the transportation facility. So, Henry, if you're correct if I'm wrong, that's roughly about if you're standing where my cursor is, looking this way into the kitchenette, and then turning around 180, and then looking at the computer. So that's that, though, that's those renderings that I just showed you there. Okay. Okay. How's it heated? How's it heated? Drew. Uh, Drew or Henry, how's it heated? It Four pieces of equipment. One is going to be outside of the driver's lounge, which is a split system. Another one above the parts uh, room, which is a split system as well. And we're going to have one uh, uh, beside the, the riser room to your right hand, sa uh, right hand side. It's going to be uh, the, uh, the largest unit that the system has, which is going to be feeding all of the bus maintenance area. This is all um, LP gas serviced and also cooled. To, to answer that question, primarily it's going to be propane. Right. But that whole, the whole bus maintenance area uh, is going to be heated and cooled. Heated in the winter, of course, and cooled in the summer. What is also, uh, there is an overhang of 
12 feet, Henry, is that correct? On both sides, On both sides there's a canopy 12 feet that if they, you know, we've got to do a headlight or a blinker or something, they don't have to pull all the way into the garage. They can just pull up underneath that canopy and then that could be done. So again, that's all going to be on both sides uh, at the top okay. and the bottom here. Go ahead. What was that, Henry? If you go one slide up, you it's on there. It. Okay, so, so again, here's that 12 foot overhang on either side over there. It, it, of course, I know that doesn't look like 12 feet, but that, that's a 12 feet overhang. You look at a 100, 112 foot wide building, that 12 feet looks very small up here. So again, it's 112 this way. All right, any other questions? Okay, so we'll go back to the renderings. Again, we can always come back to these if we need to. There's the uh, training area for the for the bus drivers, and there's a kitchenette for the bus driver. And then we go to the Style Development Center. Again, you, you remember we've seen this rendering once before. This was option six C that we verbally agreed on months ago. So started designing everything around uh, this option for the staff development center. And here's a floor plan for the staff development center. Huge training room here. Uh, we could set up that. That's about probably the size of two classrooms. Um, you know, we could set up two separate classrooms in there, have sort of training. Um, the presentation room is another fixed seating. You know, think about this, what we're currently in here at the PAC, uh, just a scaled down version for the presentation room. So we could have, uh, have, have a training here for our, uh, for our teachers. We could have all third grade teachers in this, this section. And then we could have a fourth grade people here. We could have fifth grade here. So again, you know, we, something that we cannot do now. And, uh, you know, we could do it here, but, um, but you know, this is a classroom. Uh, this is where drama beats on a daily basis. So again, we really don't have a place to do that. Uh, again, a ton of uh, input has been put into this, uh, uh, this building and uh, do have some renderings for you. Before you move on, I got a question. Yes, sir. Go back down just a second. Now, if we're, we're gonna be meeting to the right, your right there is where we'll be having our executive session, is that right? Uh, where it says conference, right Possibly, there. you know, that, that is an option, or you could actually come over and hit this conference room, either one, but yeah, yeah. That, that is a conference room. Um, you know, if you had a uh, executive session, or if you had a class training here, and then you had a two or three people, or five people wanted to have a meeting, so yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But so that, that could be used for executive session as well. Okay. Notice the records room, huge records room. Um, uh, you know, just places that, you know, we've got records scattered all over this county. And uh, so again, you know, that would be a, a great place for a centralized uh, area for, for records. Uh, here's some renderings. The left side is if you're coming in the front door of the staff development center, uh, this is the, the, uh, the foyer, the, the waiting area, or you know, whatever you want to do, the, the two training areas are to the left into this section over here. Again, this is, um, uh, again, the, the front entrance. Uh, front entrance is actually coming in here. This is coming out of the, uh, the, the, the small training room without the fixed ceiling. Here's the double doors going into the fixed seating room. Uh, and again, this, is, uh, this bottom view is if you're standing in this corner looking back towards the main entrance. So that's, uh, you know, there's some renderings there just to the foyer itself. And then going back to the presentation room. Uh, here's one rendering of the in the back corner of the presentation room. 
Uh, that, that door you was asking about, Mr. Uh, Bearden, that's that door right there going into that Correct. conference room. Um, again, fixed seating here, 130, uh, I think it's 138 fixed seats with four ADAs, so 142 uh, seat capacity. I hope we can fill them up when we get that bill. <laughs> Another rendering, again, again in the presentation room, uh, looking, uh, so this is, we're coming out of that conference room, looking back towards the fixed seating room. So there's a, just a different perspective on it. Is this, this building uh, almost fireproof? I don't fireproof? see fireproof. <laughs> the material, I mean. It, uh, it's going to be every, it's going to meet every code. So it doesn't have to have a sprinkler system on it. It does have to have a sprinkler it system. It does have it. Just because of the size, is that correct? It does because of the size of these spaces. These are called assembly spaces, and they're over a thousand square feet. So it is required to have a sprinkler system, but it's also not combustible construction. I'll go back up to the floor plan one more time with any questions that we might have. Again, this is the staff. Uh, shoot, this is the staff development. Center. Any questions on it? Correct me if I'm wrong. The reason we went and chose uh, C6 is the units mount on the roof, and they're not anywhere around the building. Is that right? One reason why we chose six. That this one is uh, the appearance of it. You know, just the appearance. Yeah. Just looks so much better. And then once we done some, uh, got some numbers from the architect and the CM. It was probably one of the cheapest, I don't want to say cheapest, the less expensive uh, than any of the views that we had. Because we, you know, we were trying to have them to do a uh, metal roof throughout, uh, do, you know, and this one's got a split, it's got some, some metal roofs, most of it's the, uh, the flat rubber that, you know, that we do 90 mil on that typically it's a 45 mil. And uh, even the architect and the CM can tell you is when we first told them we want 90 mil, I think both of their mouths dropped and uh, said, are you sure? I said, absolutely. That's what we got on our schools. And uh, this may be off uh, score, but it, it should be a tremendous asset to the whole community because of its central location and the way it has large rooms in, in the case of a disaster. I would think that it would be the most useful facility in the in the community. Very true. It, it's large enough. It's large enough. Of course, you know, by square footage, uh, you you have a max capacity per square footage. I don't, I'm not going to put anybody on the spot right there, but like that training room alone, you know, there's a maximum amount of people you can have in there. And um, uh, but again, that is, that's going to be a very secure location. All right, the next thing, well, let's go back to the, again, the scope once again. Mr. Danner, if I could interrupt you, I have a question, yes, right? Uh, that's showing a, uh, an easement or a driveway or a road directly across from the entrance to the staff development center. Is that a road or a driveway or just a right of way? That is a driveway. That driveway. is a driveway. Okay. And I think we even know who that is. Um, I don't want to say it because I don't want to make sure it's the, the, the wrong one, but it is a driveway. It's got a, Very good. Got a fence there, it's got a gate. And yes, sir, I know the one you're talking about. Uh, Thank you. I, again, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to say a name if that's the wrong owner. And, uh, well, now, Dr. Zachary lives right in there somewhere. I think that, and Dr. Dr. Zachary, Wood, I think, I don't Dr. know if he Wood still lives there. Dr. Wood lives right there. Correct. Next to him, too. Correct. I was just trying to get a reference as to where the entrance yes, sir. would be. But there will be a driveway out from staff development there, right? Yeah. Uh, so there's a, a entry exit for the staff development here. Yes. Uh, and then there's a road that connects the transportation facility up to the staff development center. That's that road there. 
and then there are two entry exits for the transportation facility um, very close to where the the driveway is now but if my memory serves me correctly the driveway that we currently have if you'll watch my cursor is roughly in this area um, is that somewhat accurate Henry so so the driveway will move just a little bit closer to the dam but I mean not far and then there's another driveway here uh, so there actually be two entry exits for the uh, the transportation uh, I would think um, and again probably most buses will come in this way uh, because again the training facility is right here I'm sorry the fueling station is right here and then the transportation here so all of this is parking uh, again this is the training area um, Mr. DeWeese asked me a question coming in and said would, would you would you talk about the the amount of paving that is a ton of asphalt that is a ton of asphalt and this whole this whole spectrum up here um, at the South Development Center this is nothing but parking lot this is nothing but parking lot but again if we you know if we fill up the uh, the staff development during a, a PL day or even a school day we have you know we have 75 teachers come in they gotta have a place to park and uh, in this perspective here this is the training room for the for the uh, teachers and this is the presentation room it's got the fixed seating so more than likely all these people are going to be parking for to use that throughout uh, again here there's, there's 77 bus spaces bus parking spaces uh, for the transportation facility and then this again is a 200 by 400 training um, training lot for buses um, so again uh, you know this this can be used at any time we don't have to go move buses out of the way we don't have to wait till school's out or uh, I know some training has taken place at the middle school uh, when that happens again this is before my time but they'd have all the staff park as close to the building as they can to empty that bottom lot at the middle school so they could do their uh, do their training uh, for, for buses uh, I know at the um, you know just one example would be like the um, uh, the rodeo you know the rodeo is one time a year possibly twice a year but for that to happen what we're currently doing now we've got a lot up here and a lot there and we just got things all over the place and um, so again this could be permanently set up uh, for the training lot and then at any time uh, I'm not sure what Denver's plans is all right Mr. Cole it's time you go train let's go so it's it's set up it's ready to go but it, again it is a it is a lot of asphalt that is a 200 by 400 section here of nothing but asphalt curb and gutter that sort of thing going back to staff development parking yes sir I'd rather have a lot too much than a lot less, not Very true. enough Very that's true. just like around here when we have a big audience you know especially over yonder not here right I mean, hard to play park they had to walk for a mile. you know even football you know um, yeah it just it uh, uh we have a do not park on the grass sign and you know here's a car almost backed into that sign that says do not park on the grass because you, you know parking at, at every campus uh, uh is a premium is a premium question on the uh fueling station yes we, sir a couple of times we talked about I don't remember the end result but is there bathrooms at the fueling station or no bathrooms at the fueling station currently there are no bathrooms at the fueling station that was brought up at one time at the very early stages of planning um, if, if we put a bathroom out here if we just put a sink to wash hands out here even that sanitation sink has got to go to the sewer system and um, uh, and from from that point to here again I'm not sure though the distance I'm not I mean maybe they could start wrapping that stuff off but uh, again the the sewer system you know here's going to be one that's going to be underground so again we to, to do one sink just to wash hands we've got to tie that in to this sewer system up here uh, uh, of course the sewer system for the staff development is up here on this side so so currently no Mr. Cole we decided as a group I mean that's gonna oh. be a lot of money okay. 
It's going to be a lot of money. Any other questions? All right, hearing none, um, we've looked at that. All right, how much is all this going to cost? <laughs> the bottom line, uh, transportation facility, $6,438,627. Includes almost $500,000 worth of equipment of lifts that we discussed just a second ago inside that. Uh, Staff Development Center, $3,791,410. Because, and again, we, you know, we've been discussing this for six or eight months, if we built them both at one time, how much would that save us? If we only, only done the transportation now and come back later and do the staff development, this number is not going to, uh, I mean, we're, we're not going to be saving this much money because, you know, moving that heavy equipment out, if we do it simultaneously, a, a minimum, uh, it's going to save us $231,274. And that, that's included, uh, or actually it's already been deducted there. So if you add these two together and subtract that, that does not add up. Yes, sir. All of the site prep work was included in the bus transportation. Bid, that is correct? correct. That is correct. Because, you know, we, we discussed early, you know, back six months ago, uh, whether we build one or two, let's go ahead and grade everything. Uh, just in case, uh, if, if something comes up as of today, if y'all decide to only build one, I would still highly recommend let's grade everything. So if we do get to build a staff development, it's ready to go. What percent is not prepped in that, when we finish this of the acreage? I'm sorry, Mr. Lee. How much acreage is left that hasn't been uh, How much uh, prepped? Uh, all right, that's a good question, Mr. Weiss. I've not really done a, to see what's left, other than if you'll look here, this is a, a stream, uh, but you know here in Fannin County, if it's got a thimble full of water coming out of it, it's considered a stream. <laughs> so we got this buffer in it. So uh, even though you, you can't even throw a rock in it and it splash, that's a trout stream in Fannin County. And, uh, so all these lines that you see here, this is our buffer zone that we cannot go into there. What's left here, uh, uh, you know, I, I walk pretty much every square inch of this property, but from the bottom where that stream is, where we can't do anything from that point forward, uh, it is a very substantial climb to this peak here. And that peak there, again, uh, I can, this point is, let me zoom in there real quick. Uh, this is 1715 elevation. This is 1790 elevation. So I mean, it, it's a it's a pretty good it's a pretty good and it, it hits a knoll right there and it goes back off the other side. Uh, there's a tri-state line transmission line that goes up here at this top corner. So there's a 50 foot uh, from both directions of that, 50 foot, 25 feet, 20, 25 feet um, right away for that transition line. So pretty much this back corner, um, we really can't do anything with because of that, uh, that right away. And um, so we but, can call that stem country. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but I tell you what, Mr. Weiss, as soon as we get through here, I can very quickly give you a good close estimate on how much acreage is left. And uh, uh, Let's go back several years ago when we redid the stadium. We did not build the field house. If I remember right, I don't remember exact numbers, but it cost us several thousand dollars because we did not do it at the same time we done the stadium. And personally, I don't think we need to wait. And it cost us, right now, it probably cost us twice as much as it did when we waited on the field house. You know, I don't count on everything going up and up and up and up. Me and, me and Drew was talking before the meeting. Drew, what number did you tell me about steel alone? In seven weeks, steel has gone up 43%. Mm -hmm. 
So we need to get him. Yeah. Need to put his thumb on him right now. Let's go and ahead and vote. <laughs> he doesn't meet it. It's up to him. <laughs> Uh, so saying that, so uh, uh, Dr. Guadney, I present it to you. Yeah, I think it's important to point out that that two hundred thirty-one thousand dollars savings is in today's money, and uh, and so that that would be right now, and so I, that number would only increase if we waited. It makes sense, as as it's been said up here, being financially able to build both at this time makes sense to do it, in my opinion. If there's, if there's no more questions, uh, uh, the memo that's uh, that will be presented. Um, I've got one last thought. Yes, sir. I think he just ignited it. Assuming it goes up, the steel goes up 70 percent before we get it built. Is that built into the contract, or will we suffer? Will that be additional cost for us? What uh, again? I might be speaking out of line. But if this gets approved today, uh, let, let me read you real quick, then I'll answer that question again. So, so I would like to recommend approval of, of the GMP, which is guaranteed max price from, from Construction Manor at risk, Bourne and Watson, on construction of a transportation facility and staff development center not to exceed the amount of $9,998,763 and to be paid for with SPLOS. Now, to answer that question, um, you know, if we, once we get all the final documents signed, I think he's pretty much bound to what to this contract, Drew. Am I accurate in saying that? We have, uh, well, of course, we have Drew here. Uh, we've brought all the experts in. I mean, we have our attorney, Lynn Doss. Do you have anything else that you want to add to that piece, Lynn? That's why it's taken so long to get to this point. We get it. We thought we had it good and tweaked. We'd make another change. Uh, call Henry. Henry, I need you to do something for me. So, you know, that changes everything. You change one thing, that changes uh, a, a ton of stuff. So we, we've done that on several occasions. Several that's, occasions. That's been based on listening to the feedback from the folks that are involved in this process. Absolutely. Um, and, Absolutely. and, you know, taking the advice of our architects. So, you know, we've got our architects that are here on board. If there's any questions for them, as I'd mentioned, Ms. Doss is here. Uh, our finance director, who's also a CPA, Ms. Wynn is here. She can verify we've got the money. <laughs> so what you said was, if we okay this today, uh, you don't go up unless we change it. This is what's going to be approved today. We got right. to sign, you know, we got to sign right. contracts and amendments. But, but yes, unless but what I'm saying is, something. and I can't see Mr. Watson through you, Mr. Danner, but I think they they want to just see you. <laughs> there you go. You notice, notice uh, every time we keep saying that, he keeps lowering his head. In, uh... What I'm saying is, though, if we okay it today, we don't change nothing as a school system. It's that price, period. That is correct. And yeah. possibly we could get some money back. There are some allowances and contingencies in there. Um, you know, if we don't run into anything unforeseen, we'll actually get some money back on this. So it will not be that, that bottom dollar. Um, you know, so, so again, you know, we, the, the core drilling results we got were favorable. Uh, of course, that's only on certain sections, but that's not the whole piece of property, of course. So. You know, once uh, once the shovels start hitting the ground, you know, we're going to keep the fingers crossed for the next 12 months or so, and, uh, and then we'll go from there. Can I ask Denver a question? Absolutely. Uh, since we mutually do the same thing, is there is everything that you need or going to need anything you foreseen? It's, I mean.
two in grounds and the portable that's We still on rotary lifts. Is that where yes, we're at? Sir. Okay. Rotary mod 35 and the ground, and then those are rotary portable as well. Right, like 70, 80,000 pound piece. Is that what they were? Uh, 35,000. 35,000. Are they adaptable to just a regular vehicle, your service trucks, et cetera? you don't know that that uh, rotary is a uh, top of the line it's you know if, if you've rode in a Volkswagen and then rode in a Cadillac that's the Cadillac of lifts okay it is my opinion after 30 years it's uh, that's a good quality uh, piece of equipment I just sold one that had been outside 20 years and worked every day. Just sold it. I don't have a question, but I'd like to offer a comment, just a perspective. I, Denver, you've operated, you and Mr. Long operated that facility and that department so efficiently and so well for so many years. And every time I drive by there in the cold weather, and I see those doors up with bus sticking out the back and your guys having to get in there and bust their knuckles and it's 17 degrees. Uh, it, I can't tell you how excited I am about the opportunity to have a facility that matches your, your integrity and, and the quality of your program. And I will say also, for 16 years I have marveled at the administration and the central office staff operating in that little old house down there where they're bumping elbows to get down the hall. Virtually no room for storage. <laughs> and yet you've operated at a such a high level of efficiency. I'm so excited about about that facility as well. I don't know, but you could probably set that old house in the training room uh, of this <laughs> new facility. And, and and you wouldn't have to worry about the plumbing going overhead when you flush the toilet. So uh, I, it, the, these facilities are truly needed. Uh, these are big numbers. But when we look at, at the efficiency of this operation, the opportunity that we have, the fact that we have been conservative in our finances, we have the money uh, to pay for them, I'm very excited and, and look forward uh, to the opportunities that these facilities are going to offer. Say that when we when we talk to our central office staff, you know what do we need? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> toilets and bathrooms at work. Toilets and bathrooms. I mean that that's 
I mean, they, they're so excited just to I'm have sure. a bathroom that works. Any other questions or comments from the board? Is there any feedback from our professionals that, that have come in that you haven't had the opportunity to share? I'm happy to recommend, as stated in Mr. Danner's memo here, this project as presented, and that means both projects, both transportation and staff development, as presented. Mr. Chair? Can the Chair get a motion that we approve as presented to do both projects for a set price of $9,998,763? I'll make that motion. Second. Is there any more discussion? Comment. Go ahead. I've always liked to say living's fine and fanning, mm -hmm. and we want the best for our teachers, our children, our, uh, for everyone. And this is it's kind of like the crowning touch after the Ag Center, and now this. It's, it, I think it's wonderful. Splosh has really blessed Fannin County, and I want to appreciate it. I think this is awesome. Sir, you mentioned the Ag Center. I'll just point out for what it's worth, uh, we actually approved a GMP on that January 23rd, 2017, so nearly four years ago to the day. And, and again, it was debt-free then, and this will be debt-free now. Do you think that's got nothing to do with what we're voting on right now, but in the scheduled time on completion of that? When I talked to him this morning preparing him for this meeting, I said, you might have one question, you might have a hundred. But I said, I guarantee you one question you're going to get is when's it going to start and when's it going to end. So I'm just going to hush, I'm going to get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> That ain't bad time for as much as going to go on. Yeah. I, I've been pretty quiet through the whole thing, but I do appreciate all the work that you've done. You hadn't took much credit for it, sir, and I know that you have spent countless hours, countless nights on the phone, and I do appreciate all the work and effort and the money that you have saved us in this whole system. I don't think it has been, it's been highlighted enough. So the effort that you put into it, I do, I do appreciate it a ton. So, well, again, that I, that's greatly appreciated. But it goes back to everybody I've already previously mentioned. Without them, I, I, I just, uh, uh, I get information, try to put it together, and then present it to you. So again, I'm gonna humbly thank you. He's a he's a strong leader. He's not he only is. is he willing to take on one project, but uh, as his first major project, but take on right. two buildings in that project. Exactly. So. And especially with all the plumbing issues you've had in the last two or three weeks, so. Don't even want to talk about plumbing. We're I don't. We're, so. we're going to do that tomorrow. All right. We're going to do that tomorrow. <laughs> but any other discussion? So we do have a motion and a second. Not yet. Yes. All, right. all those in favor? You got five. Hallelujah. Turn it back over to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Mr. Cole, we got it.